Algebra 2, 4.2a, Solve the Systems of Equations by Substitution Method. Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos for Chapter 4, the 4.1 I made, you might get confused, so you can click on this video's description to go and watch that real quick, okay? Otherwise, let's see what happens here. So there are some more efficient and accurate ways to solve a system of equations than by graphing them like we did in the last video. The substitution method is a useful way to solve systems of equations in which a variable has a coefficient of a 1 or a negative 1, you know, our buddy, the invisible 1. We'll substitute the value of one equation into the other equation, and we'll solve one equation for a particular variable and use that variable's value in the other equation to find its solution. Now, if that sounds really confusing, here's an example with one variable, okay? We're going to be doing this with two variables, but just to show you, here's one variable. So if we have two equations, 2 x 2 plus x equals 5, and 6x plus 4 equals 22. We solve the first equation, 2 plus x equals 5, and find that x equals 3. We plug that 3 in for the x in the second equation. See? That's all. We're going to do this with two variables, an x and a y. All right? It doesn't matter if it's a p or a q or an a or a b. All right? So the first thing I'm going to do when I look at this system of equations, I've got 2x plus y equals 6, and 3x plus 4y equals 4. I'm going to scan both of them and try to find a lone variable. And I see that y all by itself in this first equation. So we're going to solve this one first because of that one y. We're going to add a negative 2x to each side of this equation to isolate the y. This creates a zero pair, and we get y equals a negative 2x plus 6. Now, we're going to use this entire pink part into this equation for the y, because this is what y equals. This is what y stands for. So we plug this in in place of that y in this equation. Now we have 3x plus 4 times a negative 2x plus 6 equals 4. Now we only have one variable, and we can solve for x. We're going to distribute this 4 to the negative 2x and to the positive 6. We're going to get uh, 3x plus a negative 8x plus 24 equals 4. Now all we have to do is combine these like terms. Positive 3x plus a negative 8x is going to give us a negative 5x plus that 24 equals 4. Now we can use the addition property of equality. We want to isolate the x to solve for x. This creates a zero pair here by adding a negative 24 to each side. This makes a negative 20 on this side, and now we just have negative 5x equals negative 20. We can use a multiplication property of equality that's going to let us divide each term by this coefficient, negative 5, and we're going to get a 1x equals a positive 4. Now we're not done. Now we're going to substitute that positive 4 for x in one of the equations. It doesn't matter which one we choose, whichever one we think would be easier to do. So I chose the first equation, 2x plus y equals 6. I'm going to plug this 4 in for the x. Now I can solve for y because I know what x is. And I get 2 times 4 plus 8 equals 6. So that's an 8 plus y equals, I'm sorry, plus y equals 6. Now all I have to do to isolate for the y is to create zero pairs, right? So I'm going to take this 8 away from each side and get y equals a negative 2. So now I know that x is 4 and y is negative 2. And I've got my ordered pair, and I've got my solution for the system of equations. Okay? Let's try this again. Look at this one. Look at this system of equations. We've got these two equations here, and they both have lone variables. This one's got a lone y, and this one's got a lone y. But we're going to choose this one because it's already equals, it already is set to equal y. See that? So this one, we'd have to subtract the 6x from each side and go through all of that to isolate the y. This one, the y is already isolated, so we could just take this 3x plus 1 to represent the y and plug it into this equation. So now we've got 6x plus 3x plus 1. This y became the 3x plus 1, see? We combine the like terms, and we get 9x plus 1 equals 7. We need to isolate for the x, so we're going to add a negative 1 to each side and get 9x equals a 6. And the multiplication property lets us divide each side by this coefficient 9, 
and we get 1x equals 2 thirds when we simplify it. So remember, when we're dividing by the coefficient, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. If our coefficient is a 2, we can divide the 6 by the 2 to get a 3, or we can multiply the 6 by the reciprocal of 2, which is a half, to get the 3. It's the same thing. This is, this is quicker to divide by the coefficient when there's no fractions in the problem. So there were no fractions here. See, it was just a 9x equals 6, so it's quicker to divide by that coefficient 9. We simplified it to our 2 thirds. Now we can uh, substitute this 2 thirds in for x in one of the equations, doesn't matter which one, so that we could solve for y. So a lot of times students will make a mistake and say, okay, I solve for x, I'm done. Oh no, we still have to find y. There's two variables here, all right? So we're gonna substitute this 2 thirds in to that second equation, because it's already set for y, we're going to put the two-thirds there for the x, okay? And it's going to help us find out what y is. So now we've got y equals 3 times two-thirds plus 1. And that's y equals 6 thirds plus 1, isn't it? So that simplifies to a 2 plus 1, which simplifies to a 3. So now we know that y equals 3 and x equals two-thirds. We've got our ordered pair, two-thirds and 3, see? So it, it's not difficult. It's just long and drawn out, but you just do it methodically and you get through it, okay? I'm going to need to use this substitution method for equations with higher exponents. It's going to come in handy, all right? Our next video is 4.2b. We're going to talk about linear combinations and the elimination method. And this video's description has links to the Algebra 2 playlist. I'm going to add this video to it right now so you can use it to catch up on any videos you haven't seen or review for tests if you need to. It's going to be a link to the Algebra 1 Chapter 8 playlist for systems of equations. It's going to be a link to 8.1 from Algebra 1 for consistent, inconsistent, dependent systems of equations in case you've forgotten that from last year. All right? You want to keep up with that. A lot of times when you don't see it or don't use it, you tend to forget about it. Okay? So I'll see you next video, and we'll talk about combinations. All right? I hope you're doing well. I worry about everybody. Keep trying. Keep plugging. I'm proud of you for watching math videos on YouTube, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.